Now take your Bible, if you will. Oh, by the way, let me tell you just a couple of things. I want you to pray for Brother Palmore. Brother Palmore is on the verge, possibly, if they cannot get his coughing under control, to uh, having pneumonia. Now, pneumonia doesn't catch, but it is hurtful. And so he's had lung problems for years, and, and uh, he's got a weakened lung. You can never tell that by the way he sings. That's because he has three lungs, not like those of us that have two. But uh, you pray for him, if you will. And I know that he and his family would appreciate that so very, very much. I, I do want you to be, if you will, faithful to the services. Somebody said when the cat's away, the mice do play. And so don't pretend you're a mouse, okay? Uh, you pretend you're a Christian, a child of God. And you be faithful to all the services. And uh, uh, the men that will be preaching in my stead, I promise you, will, will take the bacon home and show you how to fry it. And uh, you, you'll enjoy it immensely. And so uh, you be in your place, if you will, and uh, you'll enjoy it. Now let's talk about navigating through. Uh, we have talked about navigating through social networking. We have talked about navigating through social media. We've talked about navigating through loneliness. Now tonight, navigating through anger management. Let's take our Bible and go back to Ephesians chapter 4. And notice what it says in verse 26. Where the Bible says, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. All right, so the Bible talks about that there's a place you could give to the devil. And notice how that's equated to that which is the former verse. Where it talks about anger. All right, now there is a way to be angry and sin not. But there's also a way to sin when you're angry. We're going to discuss both of those tonight. Skip down, if you will, and look at verse 30, where the Bible says here in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. But let all bitterness and wrath, here it is again, and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one toward another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. All right, so you want to be very, very careful that when you do have anger, which I'm going to show you how to be able to put away anger, but when you do have anger to be able to get away from it as quickly as possible. You ever been in the airport, then all of a sudden there's a bad storm that sets in, and when that bad storm sets in, all of a sudden the flights are delayed, then finally canceled. And by the way, it is not the flight attendant's uh, fault. It's not the, uh, uh, it's not the uh, captain as far as the one that's going to be flying the ship. It's not his fault. Uh, it, it's not the people that work the stand's fault. But isn't it amazing how people lose lose control and become extremely angry and normally at the people that have no control. Uh, you know, uh, anger is something that's incredibly powerful and, and lethally dangerous. Uh, anger, if you will, if we're not careful, we will wind up living like the rest of the society that does not know how to contain themselves, and they become irritable very, very quickly, and they become angry very, very quickly. You know, it doesn't take uh, uh, that which is much sense or, or counsel, if you would please, to be able to understand what circumstances are brought about by an angry man or an angry woman. You know, anger, if you will, uh, is that which we ought to make sure is contained and not released at every given hour. You know, it is not right to be angry at things that are unjustifiable or without that which is purpose. The Bible teaches how God is slow in his, in his response. Uh, in far as giving anger. You know, his anger, if you'll study it in the Bible, is always balanced with love and is grounded in holiness. By the way, if that's where his anger ought to be, that's the way our anger ought to be. So before you're too quick to justify a person's anger, if you will, make sure that it characteristically lines up with God's way of being angry. The Bible says in Psalm 103 and in verse 8, the Bible said, the Lord is merciful and gracious, the Bible says, slow to anger, watch it now, slow to anger, watch the words, slow to anger, and it says plenteous in mercy. Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 17, the Bible says that thou art God, ready to pardon, gracious and mercy, slow to anger, and it says and of great kindness, and it says uh, uh, 
uh, forsooth, it says, or forsooketh, if you will, uh, them not. So he's not going to forsake, and he's not going to be somebody that is not unkind, but yet he is slow very much to anger when anger does come. Nahum uh, 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, The Lord is slow to anger and in great power. So he has the ability and the power to be able to display great anger. Now, stay with me now, greater than you ever display. But yet the Bible teaches that he is one that does not display that great anger very often. You know, the higher that one rises in leadership the greater the need is, I believe, in controlling your anger. Now, the problem is, most of the time, the opposite is true. Most of the time, when a person rises in great leadership, they use that as an excuse to be able to give anger. I don't think a person ought to do that. The Bible has a lot to say about anger. Now, let me give you just a couple ones here in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 18. The Bible says, it says, a wrathful man stirreth, it says, up strife. But he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. The Bible says, uh, he that is slow to anger is better than a mighty, uh, it says, uh, than the mighty. Oh, watch this. Uh, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. The Bible says, the discretion of a man deferreth his anger. Look at Proverbs chapter 25 and in verse 28. The Bible says, uh, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 11. The Bible says, The fool uttereth all his mind. Uh, it says, But a wise man keepeth it till afterwards. All right, so what is it we need to understand about anger? Let me shoot you the Bible study. Statement number one, uh, is there such a thing as sinless anger? Is there such a thing as sinless anger? In other words, is there a way uh, that we are admonished in the Scripture to be angry and sin not? Is there a way for you to have righteous anger? Okay, uh, when you look, of course, of how our Lord responded, he responded to offenses, but he responded to offenses the right way. Listen to it. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and in verse 23, the Bible says, And when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself, it says, to him that judgeth righteously. Now, that word reviled simply means this. It means to heap abuse upon. All right, so when somebody was abusing him, he chose not to take his power and to abuse them. In other words, he chose not to abuse his abusers. All right, and by the way, uh, in our day and time, when you are abused, what do you want to do? You want to abuse back. When you are reviled, that's what that word means, when you are reviled, abused, what do you want to do? You want to revile again. You slap me, I'll slap you. You hit me, I'll hit you. Uh, you, uh, you do something mean to me, I'm going to do something mean to you. Now, wait a minute. That is all the works of the flesh. You are not supposed to walk in that which is the arm of the flesh. The Bible says when you do, the arm of the flesh shall what? It shall fail you. So every time you walk in the arm of the flesh, you're going to fail. All right? Uh, it was Aristotle that said this, and I want to give you the quote because it's a good one. It says, a man who is angry on the right grounds against right persons at the right matter at the right moment for the right length of time deserves to be praised. That's pretty good. So how do you know what the right time is? How do you know uh, how long you're supposed to be? How do you know, if you will, what the right moment is and what matter it is to be able to display anger? Well, I think Christ demonstrated that as we go on. Statement number one, you see, uh, is there such a thing as sinless anger? Well, yes, there is. Okay, statement number two, uh, what are the characteristics, characteristics of sinless anger? What is the characteristics of sinless anger? Well, think about this. You know, when you respond, in sinless anger, then uh, it, it's not rooted in that which is a self-interest. Uh, it's not you getting even with someone because someone did something to you. If you're trying to get even with someone because someone did something to you, then that is not an anger, if you will, 
that God is for. Uh, you know, sinless anger is not concerned with what others have done to me. Sinless anger is not concerned with what others have done to me. Well, every time I get around that person, they irritate me. Then you got a heart problem. Well, every time I get around that person, they bother me. Well, you got a heart problem. Nobody ought to bother you. And if they're bothering you, it's because your heart's in the wrong place. Oh, it's quiet in the house of God tonight. Statement number next. Sinless anger does not nurse grudges. Sinless anger does not nurse grudges. Uh, other words, it doesn't keep the fire going. When you have truly forgiven someone, you don't keep heaping coals on the fire. You don't keep stoking the fire. You know, uh, it, it, you, know you, ever, you ever do this? You ever camp outside? And the fire is getting low? You, all you got to do when the fire is getting low, here's all you got to do for those of us that are campers or pretend to be campers. All you have to do when the fire is getting low, all you do is you take uh, 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 a branch or you, you take just a twig or whatever and you go over and you just start poking it just a little bit. That's all you got to do. And you know what happens when you poke that fire that's getting low? It'll begin to blaze again. You know what happens to a person that uh, holds grudges? They're always poking. They're always wanting vengeance. Okay? Now what does that show? That shows unforgiveness. Okay, uh, you know, when you forgive somebody, you're going to stop stoking it. You're going to stop poking it. You're going to stop fueling it. Uh, you're going to stop blowing on it. Because even a gentle breeze will cause that fire to reignite. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26, the Bible says, Be angry and sin not. Now, this is good for married couples, amen. Especially married couples, amen. It says, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now, what's that mean? That means for married couples, don't go to bed angry at each other. Well, I'm so mad at him, I'm not going to talk to him. Okay, no, no, that's wrong. No, you go to bed with a good spirit one towards another. By the way, hey, here's a pretty good thing. Uh, you fellowship with each other. Don't be angry with each other. You know, you spend time with each other. All right, now, you know, over time, the giant that is anger will transform into another giant. You know what that giant's called? Bitterness. Yeah. Bitterness. When you're angry at someone, uh, if you do not take care of that, it's like a bird building a nest. You're putting in just a little bit here, a little bit there. That bird's putting in a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. And before you know it, it becomes a nest, but it only starts off with just the fragments of little twigs. And see, when a person, you, you, come on, you let, that, you let these things, you know, can I tell you, it's a good day under heaven when you are right with God thoroughly. And you're right with man thoroughly. It's a good day under heaven. You know why? Because now you're able to sleep well at night. Now you're able to go to God and get your prayers answered. Now you're able to go to God because you have forgiven and you have stood in the right place. So I'm saying that sinless anger uh, is unselfish. Sinless anger is unselfish. Uh, sinless anger does not nurture grudges. Sinless anger does not nurture grudges. Sinless anger is purposeful. Sinless anger is purposeful. You know, anger without a purpose is, is not a rebuke. Here's what it is. It's a tantrum. Did you get that? You know, anger without a purpose is not a rebuke. It's a tantrum. You ever see the Walmart brat? Okay, what's he doing? Throwing a tantrum. Okay, uh, Jesus was angry in the temple. By the way, you can read about that in John chapter 2. And Jesus was angry there in the temple, but he did it for the purpose of what? Cleansing the temple. It was purposed. It was purposed. Uh, you know, some, somebody, if you will please, that uh, doesn't have a purpose, they don't have a focus, they don't have a directive, uh, they nurse something that they should not be nursing, and before you know it, it erupts into something that it should not erupt into. 
Now, Christ had anger, but it was purpose, and he controlled his anger for a period of time, for a pointed purpose, and it was focused, and he was able to control that. All right, statement number one. So uh, uh, is there such a thing as sinless anger? Yes, there is. Statement number two, uh, what is the characteristics of sinless anger? Hey, let me give you some warnings. Warnings regarding anger. Warnings regarding anger. You know, God repeats several warnings about anger throughout the scriptures. Colossians chapter three and verse eight, the Bible says, uh, but now ye also, it says, put all, listen to what it says, put off, it says all these. Now watch the very first thing where he says to put off. He says, but now ye therefore put off all these. Now what's he say? Colossians chapter 3 and verse 8, follow along. Anger. Very first thing. Very first thing. You know, Peter, there's Peter, James, and John. You know why I believe that Peter was named first before the other two? Because he was the most well-known. Peter, James, John. Peter, James, John. You know why anger is mentioned as one of the first things to be able to put off? Because I believe it's something that gives most mankind the most trouble. Oh, let's read the list. Okay, there's anger, there's wrath, there's malice, there's blasphemy. I don't think that probably there's too many people in here that that blaspheme the Lord, that blaspheme the Holy Ghost, but I believe there's quite a few in here that might have trouble with anger. Okay, uh, it says filthy communication. It says out of your mouth. All right, so often, here's what we do. We, we try to say, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to curve my anger. That is not what your Bible says. You're not supposed to put a mask on it. You're not supposed to try to be somebody that, that smutters the breath out of it. You know, our anger is not something that's just a surface thing that brings tears to somebody else's eyes all of a sudden when you display it. It goes far deeper than that. That. If it's a constant anger, then there's a deep rooted sinful heart problem. You ever see somebody that takes their knuckles and they say, Well, I'm just so mad I could hit something, and then they do? You ever see that? You ever see somebody go out of the house and they slam the door? You ever see that? You ever see somebody take a pot or a pan and they throw it across the room at another person? You ever see that? You ever see somebody get behind the steering wheel of a car and in a rage they accelerate beyond that which is normal speed because they're angry? You ever see that? You ever see somebody instead of bending down pet the cat, they kick it? You ever see that? You know, have you ever seen somebody do this? Uh, They uh, will, uh, uh, you know, they will blow out a window or they will hit a window. They will throw a rock through a window. Uh, You ever see that? You ever see somebody take a baseball bat and utterly destroy something that uh, they should not even begin to destroy? Now, what is that? I'm going to tell you what all that is. That is somebody out of control. All right, now, what does God have to say about that? Well, you're not supposed to be somebody that uh, strikes out at a person. You're not supposed to be somebody that when reviled, you're supposed to revile again. In other words, when you're abused, uh, you abuse again. You're not supposed to take your knuckles and and come across in an ill fashion whatsoever. we, We must recognize this, that there is good anger, but very seldom will you find a person that is a spiritual person having that which is a problem with anger. Most of the time, a person that has a problem with anger is somebody that's out of control. That means not controlled by anyone, including the Holy Spirit. James chapter 1 and verse 19, the Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. Watch it now, slow to what? Anger. James chapter 1 and verse 20, the Bible says, uh, The wrath of man worketh not, worketh not, watch it, worketh not the righteousness of God. All right, so uh, statement number one, I said this. Is, is there such a thing as sinless anger? Yes. What are the characteristics of sinless anger? We talked about what are the warnings, if you would please, regarding anger. Let me give you a couple more statements. Uh, how, how do most often, okay, how we most often demonstrate anger? And think about this with me as I run through this list. How does people most often demonstrate anger? Well, they withdraw, they isolate themselves, there's no communication. 
You know, it's like somebody that says, I tell you what, if I can't, if I can't have my marbles, then I'm going to take them home. I don't want to share. And they just ragingly run out with their marbles. Okay? It's because they lost their marbles. No, okay. <laughs> uh, here's another way uh, anger is demonstrated. Yelling. Yelling, shouting, name-calling. Yeah. Yelling and shouting and name-calling. Hey, here's another way. Threats. They threaten people. They threaten people. Hey, here's another way. They lose control. They start throwing things. I'm talking about ways that people show anger. They lose control, start throwing things. Hey, here's another way. They start shoving, slapping, and punching. By the way, I've seen girls do this. I sure have. I have. You know, when you think anger, you think, oh, yeah, that's a guy's problem. No. I've seen girls do this. I've seen girls in this church that when something bothers you, all of a sudden you get this scaling, angry look upon your face. And all of a sudden I see you punch someone else. Shove someone else. Now, fellas, I love you, but I'm going to help you out a little bit. If she don't get a grip on that, one day she's going to be shoving you. And she's going to be punching you. Oh, you say, sick them, preacher. Come on, man, sick them. That's all right. I'll be talking about your problem in the future. But right now what I'm saying is this. You know, there's the shoving, there's the slapping, there's the punching. You know, all of those things that's above, that represent that which is anger in the wrong way. You know, when, when a person uh, withdraws, if you will please, uh, because they can't control themselves, they withdraw. You know, they just got to hurry up and get out of the room. And, and I've heard people say this. They say this. Well, I've got to get out of the room right now because I, I might say something I should not say. What you're saying is you're not yielded to God and God is nowhere in control of you and you got problems. Why is it that you have to cause yourself to get out from somebody else's presence because you're not in his presence? If you're in his presence, then you're going to stay in other people's presence. But if you're out of his presence, you're going to have a hard time being in other people's presence when the fire gets hot. So ask yourself, you know, uh, what is it that you are experiencing right now? What is it that you're going through right now, stay with me now, that makes you want to isolate yourself from your wife? That makes you want to isolate yourself from your husband? What is it that's under your skin so much that is getting you so upset that you feel like you can't be around a certain person because after all, every time you get around them, they push your button the wrong way? If I were you, I'd just get rid of your button. Hey, look at your Bible, Ephesians chapter 4, and I put some notes down for you. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31, the Bible says, let all bitterness and wrath. Now, when that wrath, that word wrath, you can look it up if you want to, uh, as I did. When that word wrath there, that means you're coming to a boiling point in your life. That's what that word means. It's a boiling point in your life. And anger, that's a place of indignation. The Bible says in clamor, what is that? That's an outcry. That's an outcry. Evil speaking, what is that? That's in, uh, injurious speaking. You're, you're doing it to injure someone. Now, God says what to do with that. What do you do with the bitterness? What do you do with the wrath? What do you do with the anger? What do you do with the clamor? What do you do with that evil speaking? Now, here's what he says. Now, watch this very clearly. It says, be put away from you with all malice. What is malice? Malice is the desire to injure. All right? Now, God says, here's what you do. You put away that. You put away that. He didn't say you control your anger. It's not what he said. It's not what he said. He didn't say control your anger. For those out there that say, well, I tell you what, I, I'm trying to control myself right now. That's not what God said. God didn't say control your anger. Here's what God did say. Instead, it says, put it away. Put it away. What's that mean? That means cast it out. 
It means bury it. It means don't dig it back up. Hello? See, some people say, well, well, well you know, uh, my anger, it doesn't hurt anyone. Well, you're wrong because it hurts you. You're someone. And every time you go into rage, it hurts your relationship with the Lord. It is sin. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. That's you. Okay? Uh, you know, one of the greatest battles you're ever going to battle is to put away anger and not control, stay with me now, its experiences. I've said often, you squeeze an orange, orange juice is coming out. You squeeze a person that's right with God, sweetness is going to come out. You squeeze a person that's not right with God, judgment comes out. See, when you get squeezed, the real you comes out. When you get squeezed, people get to see who you really are. So what comes out all of a sudden when you have a bad day? You ever see somebody when all of a sudden they get squeezed, they blame everybody else? Well, I'll tell you what, it's my parents' fault. It's my brother's fault. It's my sister's fault. You watch people and be very, very careful about people. It's always shoving the blame. I'm going to tell you why. Because you not realized whose fault. It really is. You know, nobody can offend somebody that doesn't want to be offended. Let that sink in. Nobody can offend somebody that doesn't want to be offended. And a person that truly doesn't want to be offended will be rooted in Christ so deep that they don't take offense. So I submit to you tonight, if you're offended because of something, it's because you have a poor relationship with Christ. Because my Bible says, great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Amen. Somebody comes to my office and they say, well, I've been offended by so-and-so. My question is, well, why are you not right with God? Because if you were right with God, you wouldn't be offended by anybody. So-and-so is getting under my skin. Oh, I'm sorry, your skin is so thin. Well, so-and-so is getting on my nerves. Get your nerves out of the way. You say, preacher, this is pretty tough stuff. Yeah, it kind of takes a mature Christian to be able to understand it, grasp it, and live it. But should we not all strive to be more mature than less? Should we not all strive to be greater in Christ than less in Christ? Statement number next, think about this. Weapons to fight anger. Oh, hey, this is good. Weapons to fight anger. What do you do? Here's what you do. You commit your rights to God. What really makes you angry? Normally something you're holding on to that you possess, that you think that you and only you have a right to. And somebody is infringing upon your sacred area. And they took a part of something that you think that you primarily and premierly ought to have control. You know, usually a, a person that has personal rights is a person that thinks that I own this. And because I own it, nobody else has a right to it. So statement number one, how is it? What are weapons to fight anger? You ready? A weapons to fight anger, commit your rights to God. Statement number two, transfer your rights to God. Statement number one, commit your rights to God. Statement number two, transfer your rights to God. Here's what it says. Listen to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and in verse uh, 19. The Bible says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. What do I do next? Then I, I, you correct yourself before others have to correct you. Oh, come on, ready? Watch. I want to show you something. You ready? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You come into the preacher's office, and the preacher says, well, you say, you say well, well, preacher, I really want to get closer to God. If you see anything in my life that I need to correct, please show me, and I'll work on it. Well, that's great, and that's 
admirable, and certainly I would oblige you so. But I will also ask you this before I answer such a question. I will ask you this. If I do step out into your sacred area of personableness, and I start naming things that I think before God and in the sight of man that you need to correct in your life, can you handle it? Because if you cannot handle it, I don't need to tell you. Because if I tell you and you can't handle it, you're going to get mad at me. And I'd rather keep you as a friend and you be immature than to lose you as somebody that I could never grow. So what do you do? Here's what you do. And by the way, doesn't it say that you're supposed to, uh, you're supposed to take the, the beam out of your own eye, I think it's Matthew chapter 7, before you try to remove the moat, or excuse me, take, take the moat out of your own eye before you're supposed to take, take the beam out of your own eye, it's hard, take the beam, it's because it's my Take the beam out of your own eye before you take the moat, a uh, 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 little dust, if you would, particles, out of your brother's eye. Yeah, I think, I think you're supposed to do that. Okay, uh, think about this. We, we usually blame our anger on others. Well, if they would have treated me right, I wouldn't be angry this way. Oh, come on. Really? That's not true. Our Lord wasn't treated right. He looked out over that angry mob and he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. By the way, as long as you're a part of the human race, you will never be treated right. You're going to find somebody that's going to mistreat you, somebody that is not going to see eye to eye with you. But your Christianity is always going to be revealed. Okay? Uh, but uh, that's not the case. You know, others have the ability, somebody says, to, to be able to draw out of me, and by the way, this is true, what I really am. And by the way, they do. Okay, watch this. Okay, here I am. I'm beside the well. I'm thirsty. Put the bucket in. Reel it down. Get the water. Reel it back up. Drink the water. Whatever's in the well is coming out. So whatever is in your well eventually will come out. So we have to understand this, okay? You know, you know, others have the ability to draw what is already inside of us out. They do, and it will come out, okay? Uh, no one can really make you be angry. Listen to this statement. You know, you become angry because you already had angriness with inside of you. It just took somebody else to draw it out. If I go fishing, whatever's in the pond, if I catch it, it's coming out. Hello. By the way, whatever bait it is that the devil can use in your life to get you to bring out wrong things, he'll do it. He's a great baiter. Okay? Uh, but, but no one really makes you angry. Okay, constantly, you know, allow your anger to be uh, revealed, if you would please, reveal those hidden areas of pride and self-pity. You know, when somebody is angry, shows pride and self-pity. You ever see somebody that's angry? They're either going to show pride, stay with me now, or self-pity. Well, I didn't deserve that. Oh, I can't believe they did that to me. Well, you know, that makes me mad that somebody would think something like that about me. Oh, I can't believe somebody thought that about me. It's either pride or self-pity. Now, by the way, those things need to be mortified, put to death. You ready? So evaluate yourself. Here's a good way to do it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, evaluate yourself. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, here's what you do. Okay, uh, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not itself. Charity is not, uh, avaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. 
thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. It says, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So what do you do? Evaluate yourself. Are you walking in the spirit of the flesh? Galatians chapter 5 can answer that. Statement number next, consider the door, of ang- uh, the door that anger opens. Consider, if you would please, the door that anger opens. The Bible says to be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Then it says this, neither give place to the devil. So it does give a place. Okay, example. Uh, you, you go and you rent a large storage area. Eventually you'll fill it. You buy a large house. And eventually you'll fill it. See, whatever you build, you normally put stuff in it. Okay? Uh, when you rehearse anger over and over and over again, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, let me give you a last thought and I'm done. Okay? Uh, uh, be somebody that will console yourself on the fact that God will settle your accounts. God will do it. You ready? God's bigger than you are. Well, that's a, that's a novel thought, isn't it? God's bigger than you are. Well, I'll tell you what, so-and-so, they deserve to crash and burn. Okay? If God thinks so, don't you think he can handle it? I've seen him take down kings and kingdoms. I have. Romans chapter 12 and verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Romans chapter 12 and verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather, says, give, uh, it says, but rather, uh, give place uh, unto wrath, it says, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So he said, he said avenge not yourselves. Don't do it. Bible says, therefore, it says, if, if thine enemy, oh, this is a good one, if thy enemy hunger, what you do is rejoice. <laughs> Woo, yeah. That's not what it says. It says, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. Didn't say with poison in it. <laughs> Left that part out. It says, for in so doing, it says, you shall heap coals of fire upon his head. Uh, Romans chapter uh, 12 and verse 21, the Bible says, be not overcome with evil, but it says overcome evil with good. Years ago, there was a pastor, and he decided he's going to go through McDonald's drive through It says going through McDonald's drive through he, he, uh, he was in a hurry. He didn't see the woman. He cut her off. Boy, that woman pulled up behind her, pulled down her window, started cursing. I mean, she started making all sorts of uh, mediums with using different forms of communication. So when he got up to the window, he said to the person that was waiting there, I cut that lady off. She's not going to hear my apology. I didn't see her. Here's 20 extra bucks. Whatever she wants. I'm paying for it. Please tell her I'm sorry. So what's that called? I think Christianity. I think Christianity. See, you and I deserve nothing. I'm done. Save that which is death and hell. And I love you tonight, but anything you get above hell, that's a brownie. Thank God you have a life to be able to live. May I remind you, please? And I'm done. Here it is. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 23. It says, who, when he was reviled, this is our Lord, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. But he committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. See, there's no reason for anger. I was 16 years old. I'm done. Here it is. I got to give the illustration. 16. I was 16. I never would forget. When I was 16 years of age, I made some decisions in my life. 
because I was raised in a home that I decided I didn't want to do some things that I was seeing. My dad sometimes would come home and on a, on a, uh, on a Friday night, he'd have too much sauce and he'd be drunk. And I watched my daddy pull into the driveway and if my daddy pulled in in a raging way, screeched to a halt and slammed the door, we knew we were all going to be in trouble that night. There's many a night when uh, my brothers and I would, would, would face dad and it was wrath. It was painful. Uh, we heard the words. We, we experienced all that stuff. And I said back then when I was 16 year old, not saved, not saved, not saved. I said I will never lay my hands on my wife or my children. I I'm not going to do it. Now, of course, I've spanked the boys and our girl, I have spanked our girl, but only when needed. You know what I'm saying? But never raised the fist, never did that. I was 16, not even saved. Not even saved. Wait a minute. I watched my dad come home, and sometimes he, he'd be on that sauce, he'd, he'd be on that liquor, and I said this, I do not want to drink liquor. I wasn't saved. But see, there's some things you make Decisions in your life that's just common sense. Yeah. Say, uh, preacher, has there ever been time when you got angry? Yeah. But I've waited and I've allowed the anger not to control me, but we me use the anger as a way to give direction, instruction, purpose. And by the way, we need to do that. Listen to what I'm saying tonight. Your kids need to see a mom and daddy that's in control, not a mom and daddy that's out of control. Your kids deserve the right to see a spirit-filled daddy and a spirit-filled mama that knows how to walk with God and is not offended by everything that blows up the driveway. I've counseled kids before, and I say, why are you going into such a rage? Well, that's what daddy does. See, many times your kid will copy you, and they don't even know why they're copying you. They just think that that's lifestyle, and it ought not to be that way. I'm not asking to be a perfect parent, nor am I asking you to be a perfect individual, but I am saying this. There's a way to be able to let God have control. There's a way.